Hi guys, how are you? And today I'm here to answer a question that many of you have. After all, what happens after death? I'll show you everything based on the word of God. I'll show you what Jesus said, and I'm sure it will become clearer from now on, and it will change your way of relating to God. Amen? So before we begin, I want to ask you to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell to be notified by YouTube whenever I upload a new video. Stay with me, okay? So let's start with today's question. I know that when we ask people what happens after death, many of them respond something like this. Well, how am I supposed to know? Nobody has ever come back to tell, right? But when we look at the Bible, we see that there is someone who did go and come back. That someone is Jesus. And because of that, what Jesus said will come after death is a reliable source of information and we can trust it. The Bible shows the testimony of hundreds of people who were with Jesus after he rose from the dead and appeared to many people during the 40 days he stayed on earth until his resurrection and the moment he ascended into heaven. I will leave the Bible references in this video, okay? So let's get started. First of all, it is important for us to remember the cause of death. What caused it? I don't know if you know, but man and woman were not made to die. God did not create Adam and Eve and all of humanity to die. All of this is a consequence of sin. The sin that was generated from Adam and Eve created a barrier, a separation between man and God. Man in the beginning was made to have communion with God, but he disobeyed the Lord and turned his back. After Adam and Eve, everything has been like this, and as a result, man has separated himself from God, who is the source of life, isn't it? So death is a consequence of our disobedience because blaming only Adam and Eve won't help us. We also disobeyed God, and because we are sinners, we are all subject to death, and there is certainly no escape from it. One day, death will knock on our door. Some people say that the only certainty we have in this life is death. I will show you that we can be certain of resurrection, and this is something that Jesus promised, and I will talk more about it later, okay? People always have many different answers about what will happen after death. For example, a person who is very materialistic, very focused on the things of this earth, denies the resurrection of Jesus, denies that the Bible is the word of God. And for them, death is the end of everything, like a blackout. Everything is over and the lights go out, and then nothing else happens. And the question that remains is, what is the proof of this? How do they know? How can they be sure? Imagine a person who lived like this, believing all their life that death is the end, and as soon as they die, they discover that there is an afterlife. Terrible suffering waiting for those who never cared about God. So, really, brothers and sisters, it is a very complicated thing for a person to believe in this way, to bet their eternity on the possibility that everything will end after death. And what if it doesn't end? So this is the position of a minority. It's not everyone who thinks this way, but there is still a group of people who believe that nothing will happen. And there are also those who talk about reincarnation. I myself was a spiritist, and I believed in it. And for these people, after death, the spirit wanders the earth. It moves through other spiritual worlds until it gets the opportunity to come back in a material form. They believe they will live a new life with a new identity, without remembering the previous existence, without remembering what happened in past lives. This, logically, can be revealed through a medium, through someone who has some spiritual vision and can see that in the past life they were indeed that way. But I don't believe in this theory that has become very popular, well known, especially through the writings of Allan Kardec. However, when we read the Bible, the Word of God, we see that it is impossible to agree with this idea of reincarnation because it doesn't match with the teachings of Jesus. There is no mention in the Bible of this second chance that humans will receive. On the contrary, when the Word of God speaks about death, it says it is a final point in existence on this earth. And after that, the final judgment will come. So, for better or for worse, there is no prospect of us returning to this world. And besides, there is another question. If we could always reincarnate, following a cycle, then why did Jesus have to die on the cross for us? The whole Bible makes it clear that Jesus died on the cross to save us, that is, to free us from death and eternal condemnation, which is just what our sins deserve, isn't it? So this would be unnecessary if reincarnation were to follow after death. And there is another type of person who believes that the soul, 
after death, enters a state of sleep. This is very common, people thinking this way. It would be a way for the person to be insensitive, as if they didn't perceive what is happening around them, and they will only awaken on the day of judgment. And I also don't believe in this view, and it is a problematic view, because in the Bible there are references to people who were dead, but conscious, and they clearly remembered their life after earth. An example of this is the parable that Jesus told of the rich man and Lazarus. These two men were conscious of what they had experienced here on this earth. And Jesus said that it is also impossible for a person who has already died to come back, and for us to communicate with the dead. And besides, on another occasion, Jesus said that in eternity we will sit down with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And there is also another issue. In the book of Revelation, we see that it speaks about the souls of the martyrs who demand justice from God here on earth against those who martyred them. Then you can read Revelation 6, verses 9 to 11, in your own home. So everything in the Bible shows that after death, a person continues to have consciousness of how their life was on earth, and they survive in a conscious spirit, with memory of the things that happened here. Of course, the Bible says that whoever goes to heaven, there will be no pain, there will be no suffering. So it's not possible to know exactly how it will be. But it's as if God erases the negative things. As if we don't feel nostalgia. We don't feel anything that is bad. Just to sum up, this theory of the sleep of the soul has no foundation in the Word of God. And there is also another type of person who believes that there is life after death, but that happiness is for everyone, that everyone will be happy in the end, that everyone will be treated will go through some kind of purgatory, even very bad, cruel people will be restored. So, this is a very common theory in our society. Many people believe in it, and they always say, right? Ah, uh, in the end, everything will work out, everyone will die, but will go to a good place. And they make it clear when they are at a funeral, for example. They always say, right? Our friend went to a better place. Yeah, our friend was promoted, you know. But when we look at the history of that person, often we see that that person was someone who betrayed a lot. Someone who was not a good father, a good mother, a violent person, a thief, a dishonest person, and so many other character flaws. And it's not that our salvation is based on our merit, you see. Brothers, I will explain a little more later, but there are a lot of bad people, people who were murderers, thieves, corrupt, who did so many wrong things in this life, and it seems that when they die, people treat them as if they were saints. They soften their sins a lot. So the most correct, most sensible position is the one that the Word of God teaches us. And what does it teach? That death comes as a result of our sin. We will die and stand before God. Once after death comes judgment. And then, there are only two possibilities. Eternal life, a life full of joy, a life full of peace, or condemnation, and eternal suffering. Eternal life is granted to those who, in this life, have repented of their sins and received Jesus as their only and sufficient Savior. Why? Because salvation is not by our merits, by our works. You can be a good person who does a lot of good for people, donates basic baskets, visits orphanages. But as I told you, we are all sinners and therefore we cannot be before such a holy God, a God who has no sin. And that is why Jesus came. He carried sin on himself on the cross. Our sin was on him because Jesus also had no sin. The enemy tried to make him fall into temptation, to stray, to commit a sin just like you and me. But Jesus did not sin and therefore could carry our sins on himself. He was the perfect sacrifice. So when we believe in that sacrifice, we believe that Jesus died and rose again for us. So by faith, we receive God's forgiveness right away and gain eternal life. So after death, we enter into this state of happiness in the presence of God forever, just as Jesus told that thief who died next to him on the cross. Jesus said, Today you will be with me in paradise. And as that criminal had repented of his sins and believed in Jesus, he was able to enter paradise with Jesus, which is the name the Bible gives to the heaven that awaits us. So for those who believe in Christ as their Lord and Savior, did you understand? So the Christian must face death as something natural that came because of sin, but knowing that their hope is beyond death. And Jesus himself affirmed, right? Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. So we have to have this certainty, even if we die, we will live eternally with Christ if we repent and believe in him as our savior. 
And Paul also spoke about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. He said, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Why did he say this? Because the resurrection took the power of death over the human race. So death, which is our greatest enemy, the greatest enemy of human beings, was conquered by Jesus on the cross. When he rose from the dead, he was the first to rise. And now, all who believe in him will also be resurrected. Amen? This is wonderful, brothers and sisters. It is not by our merit. I had a very crooked life, a life of disobedience. But one day Jesus forgave my sins, and I believed in him as my Savior. From then on, my relationship with God was restored. And if I am speaking here to you today, it is because of that. It is because of the grace of God. And then there is that other alternative that the Bible shows us, which is condemnation and eternal suffering. And think with me, brothers and sisters, what could we expect from a person who lived in this world, who ignored the presence and love of God, who did not accept Jesus as their Savior, who broke the commandments all the time and did everything that came to their mind? Would that person be saved? Should that person be in heaven with God's people who were forgiven by Jesus? No, that person will reap the sin they sowed throughout their life, and the wages of sin is death. That is what is written in the Word of God. So, whoever sowed the seed of sin and disobedience in their life will surely reap condemnation. Why? Because they were not forgiven. And Jesus made this very clear. There is no other life. There is no second chance. We must seek the Lord on the day called today. We have to seek God while there is still time. So I want to pray for you now. I want to offer you the same opportunity I received many years ago, the opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. You who recognize at this moment that by your own merits, by your own efforts, you cannot be a person who lives without sin, that we are all sinners. But what Jesus expects is that you recognize this, because he himself said, I did not come for the healthy, I came for the sick, I came to save sinners. So may you recognize your sin and ask Jesus to forgive you. Because brothers and sisters, this life is very fleeting. This life does not guarantee us anything. We need to be rooted in Christ. And I'm sure that if you repent and invite him into your life, he will come in. And from now on, you must walk in the ways of the Lord. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. So I want to pray for you. If you can, close your eyes and let's pray. Lord, my God and my Father, I want to thank you for this special moment when we heard your word and we came to the conclusion, my Father, that we cannot save ourselves. So I ask for your forgiveness, Lord. In the name of Jesus, forgive me, Father, for all my mistakes, for all my faults, for my disobedience. Lord, I recognize that I cannot receive salvation and I cannot buy it. And I recognize that there is no other chance. I have to repent now. That is why, my Father, I ask for forgiveness for all my sins, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in you, Jesus, as my only Savior. Jesus, forgive my sins, write my name in the book of life. I want to walk with you every day from now on. Help me, Lord, to overcome evil, to overcome sin, to overcome the devil and this world. I want to be with you forever until that day when I will meet the Lord forever. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, my brothers, if you prayed with faith, if you prayed for the first time giving your life to Jesus, I want to tell you that Jesus has forgiven you and saved you, and now you have to walk with him every day. You have to understand that it's not a religion, it's a relationship that you will start with the Lord day by day, and you will learn more and more what his will is. Now you have to renounce your life, your sin, to do the will of God, and you can be sure that it's the best decision you make. Amen. You can be sure that your life won't be easy because you will fight against the things of this world. You will swim against the tide. But it will be worth it because Jesus himself said, He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Amen. God bless you, big hug. And until the next video.